Hi, hey everybody. My name is Joe McMahon. I am the activities director at Hanford West High School, and I've been here for um, 23 years and doing activities for 19. And this is my first year in um, doing it in a hybrid uh, situation. So um, I'm hoping that you're some people are more of an expert than I am here. So that's great. Uh, what I want to do right now is um, we're going to start off with just kind of an introduction of like, hey, what are some of the ideas we need to start looking at for uh, next year's training of our students? And then uh, once we get started with that, then we'll have you break up into groups. We'll have breakout rooms for middle school and for high school and um, be able to give you some ideas on what you can be doing with your students. So without that, I'm going to move on here and share my screen. Awesome. Hopefully you're seeing the slide training the next generation of student leaders. Excellent. All right, let's move on from there. Happiness can be found even in the darkness of times, even one only remember to turn on the light. That's that Shauna's favorite quote, right, Shauna? All right. So one of the things we want to look at, and I was, you know, I had this thought process when I was listening to Dr. Tim Elmore. Uh, a lot of these ideas that I've been going through uh, are from his book. Uh, and you can see I got my little post-it notes on there, a lot of great ideas. Uh, but first thing, pot potential negative effects students will be facing when they return. Um, normalization of isolation. Students will be facing the face-to-face -face connections they haven't had. They will like, oh, we haven't had this. What am I gonna do? How do I, how do I deal with other people? How do I understand you know, how I can get out there and feel safe about it? The convenience of screens will hurt mental and emotional, um, emotional health. Basically, the screens, that, that safe thing that all of our students, especially at the middle school and the high school level, you know, all the game playing, their TikTok videos, all the social media, the places where they feel safe, we're going to be pushing them back into a classroom where they haven't been for over a year. And we're going to have to find ways to make those connections and make them feel like they belong. This is a safe spot. So the possible answer is give them some low risk opportunities to grow their self-confidence. We're going to have to build them back up because our students you know, a year plus of very unorthodox education is something we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to reteach them and they're going to have to become comfortable again with the educational background. So number two, normalization of panic, anxiety. Uh, we've already witnessed it. The rise of panic and anxiety by students with lack of interest in returning to campus. Uh, I don't know about you, but at my school site, uh, we started in a hybrid situation in November. And um, of the, we have 1,250 students on our campus, and we expected about 750 of those students to return to campus. Well, we only got about 400 actually to return to campus right away. And it wasn't until after spring break that we actually had an, an additional 200 students join our hybrid situation. So they were really afraid. And, one thing we need to do is we need to know, let students know like, hey, we understand, you know, what you went through at home. We, you, they had either one, somebody in their family, somebody they knew that got sick. Um, maybe they lost somebody. Um, and then, of course, the, the unsureness of financial stability in the home, uh, being scared about all those things. Um, and what, what was their roles at home during this time? Um, so possible answer, let them know that we see them and we respect them and how they feel. We need them to understand like, hey, you know, we all have different things that we went through and we have different experiences and everybody's going to have a different thought process on how to handle that and how are we going to make that so they feel comfortable. So let them know, hey, we know you all have different experiences. And the only way we're going to be able to find that out is to share that and be able to work together. Normalization of scarcity market. We must work to ensure that coronavirus doesn't remove hope, faith, and optimism for students. I mean, hey, there was extreme panic. There was no toilet paper. I mean, there was people worried about that, right? So we're going to make sure that they understand that, hey, this is, there is always hope. There are some things you can do to find those things. Uh, hope, faith, and optimism. Possible, let them help others and serve those that are less fortunate. For them to see like, hey, you know what? Appreciate 
what do I have? Find the stones, the things in the rough for themselves and be able to, to cherish those themselves and to move on. And like, hey, I, can, I have these great things happening in my life. How can I help others? How can I make others feel comfortable, wanted, and they're not alone? So that's what we're looking for our ASP students or our student leaders to be doing when we return. All right. We can help the pandemic population by emerging from this saying, life is hard, but it's definitely worth it. All the challenges, the obstacles that we have faced, those make us stronger. Those experiences that we have give us confidence when you've beaten them or you've overcome them. I will rise up far above average. Our expectations can be much higher and our goals pushing the students forward and doing great things. I will find a way to turn this disadvantage into an advantage. I always love to tell my students, I said, you know, we weren't able to do the activities that we're used to at Hanford West all these months. But think of all the great things that we got out of it, the technology that we gained, all the teachers' lessons that are now going to have all these extra things that they never had before or they were never pushed to have. Like now we have uh, cahoots online. We play bingo online. Things that we can make connections with kids outside of the classroom and they can be anywhere. They can be anywhere. I will confidently pursue my goals. Nothing's be above and beyond us. We can go and do some great things for our students. And if, some, uh, if we give them the confidence, like, hey, we can conquer this. We beat this together and we can come back together and do something bigger and stronger. Uh, we provide them with events and activities that make them feel comfortable and feel they're part of something bigger. We're all part of something bigger and moving forward together as a group. And we're there for each other. So making them feel like they belong and they're not alone. All right. So with that being said, uh, what we want to like to do is we'd like to move everybody into breakout rooms, the, the high school and the middle school, and we'll share some ideas that we have for what we're going to do in our summers to get ready for our students, leaders to come back and take on these roles and help people feel like they belong. Um, so, Ron, how do we do that with the breakout rooms? Well, I have the breakout rooms all set. So if you have the, the updated version of Zoom, then, and Joe, do you mind if I, can I turn off screen share now? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you okay with that? That's fine. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hey, good to see your face. All right. Uh, so I have, I have set aside two breakout rooms. There's middle school and there's high school. So you got two choices. It's real easy. If you have a newer version of Zoom, you'll see an option to choose either middle school or high school. And if you don't have one of that new version of Zoom, that's okay. We can go ahead, you just ask us, and we can go ahead and move you into either middle school or high school. But we're gonna let you uh, have the choice first. And also, hey, Petra, before we go into breakout rooms, Ooh. Petra, can I say it or can I not say it yet? You can say it. Okay, so I just wanna let you know that you know every year we have the, the Warren Scholl Award and Petra Davis Johnson, who was the 2021 CADA Warren Scholl Award winner for middle school. She's at high school now, but middle school, thinking middle school and high school, this got me thinking. Petra then moved on to the regional where she won the regional award. And just recently, Petra Davis Johnson was awarded the national War and Shull Award. So I just wanna give a shout out and applause to Petra Davis Johnson. We are so proud of you. This is the first time I've seen your face, Petra. So excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. Well, so if you happen to see Petra, see, she was just at a middle school last year and this year she's at a high school. So if you happen to see her in the high school room, don't think she, that she's a fraud. It's just, <laughs> all, it, all it means is that she won an award for one year, but then she, she, uh, she moved up to the high school for, the, for this year. So uh, Petra, congratulations. Thank We're you so much. We're very proud to, to call you our own. So very exciting. Okay, so now... Uh, with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and open up all the breakout rooms. And uh, if you need some help, then let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you back after the breakout room time. Here we go. Okay. So if you could please, in the chat, you put your name. And um, what are you an expert at? 
And I really love to see that and, and your contact information, because what I've learned in Cata on all these years, because at first I was not a big Cata fan, but what I learned really quickly was the people of Cata are the greatest resource. And if we have all these people that have all these things, like I'm really good at this. Hey, that is a person I need to tap on the shoulder and get some help from. So if you could in the chat, your name, what you're an expert at, and your contact information. And then that way people can get a hold of you. It's the best part about CADA is the networking. I believe it's been awesome. And I will tell you that, um, that when I started off in the hybrid or the uh, digital world this year, I really, for me mentally, I leaned heavily on the resources provided by CADA friends. I don't know if you saw on the website, resources provided by CADA friends. I leaned on that heavily for the first month or so because I was not like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so, all right. Um, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I bet you you're all experts on something. You just like very humble. And I know we're all humble servants as well, but share that information. What's well, something you know you're good at. Okay. Perfect. All right. I am going to share my screen with you so we can move on. All right, perfect. And we got recording. Going. So as I said, Joe McMahon, Hanford West High School. Uh, I have been in teaching here for 23 years, 19 of activities. Um, sometimes I think I know what I'm doing and sometimes I'm like, oh, what went wrong? Uh, one of the first things I want to think about in the high school level, remember only your seniors have had a full year of in-person instruction at the high school level. They're just your seniors. Everybody else is like, uh, not a full year. So they haven't had a lot of the trainings. And as I stated before, we're gonna have to relate, turn to learn to relate to our students more on a deeper level than we've ever had before, because we're gonna have to know where they're coming from. What did they experience? <laughs> so the summer trainings, how are students gonna relate to each other? We've had them a year of isolation. What impact will it have on their mental states? We don't know what they're going through. So one of the first things, I've already started working with my students and my executive board has already been selected for next year. We're like, how can we get students to open up with each other? What are the things that are gonna do to try to get students to feel comfortable enough and share and be genuine and supportive of each other? So first thing we're gonna do, we want to do possible solutions. We want to be outside for training. We want to do outside training because you don't want to be in the classroom because you want to make people feel like they're comfortable and they're like safe and you want to keep the masks on all right, as much as possible because you want to give them space to work with and you want to respect their worries. I have a couple of students that they're uh, even though they've been selected for our executive council for next year, they have decided that they're, they're on, the, on the fence if they're going to come back to school or they're going to go in the online charter because they're, they're still afraid because of what they dealt with. And you have to understand like, hey, you know, I respect that and I will be here for you, but you're not alone. We all have fears. We have fear every single time we go out the grocery store, we go down that grocery store aisle and you see like, oh, there's 10 people down that aisle. You know what? I'll go back for that item on my list later. I'll go down the next aisle. And we're going to have students like that. And I still see it. Um, I've seen it with my own son, who is a junior at my school. We walk in the campus and I'm like greeting people. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? We have our masks on. But I've seen my son sometimes. He moves over to the side where there's not people. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing that? And he goes, well, I just don't want to take the chance of them breathing near me. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, that, that's, that's, his, that's his choice. That's, that's his worry. Is he still afraid? Even though he's been fully vaccinated, our whole family's been fully vaccinated and our youngest just got the first shot. Uh, who's um, He's 14. So you got to respect those things. I'm like, oh, okay. Why are we here? We need the students to realize why are we here? So at Hanford West, we have this, I understand that leadership starts with me, but it's not about me. That is my responsibility to create energy for school spirit. And I get to serve my campus, my community. And I look forward to ways to highlight others. So Stephen Abinson came up with this years ago and we ran with it here at Hanford West. So it's one of those things that makes them feel, it starts with them. They have to have the confidence 
to be able to make a difference. They have to be out there to be outreach to the other students. It's not about me, but how can I get those other people to feel comfortable? It's my responsibility to create school spirit, but we're also looking for them to keep create an open atmosphere of feelings. I get to serve my campus. I get to help people be successful and overcome the obstacles that they've had in front of them. And I will look for ways to highlight them and pat them on the back. Um, the one minute manager, and he talks about the one minute manager, you give those positive feedback right away, the one minute positive feedback right away. And the students have to buy in as well. So it's not just the teachers, but the students and the student leaders helping. Some of the skills we're gonna have to do, emerging leaders, basic skill sets. We need communication. We need the relationship build. We need to get students to be like, okay, I feel comfortable talking to this group. And that is just going to take time. And high school students, they don't open up real easy. They, they're like, like, hey, these are my friends. These are the people I talk to. You know, I got a bunch of strangers in front of me. How do I do that? Relationship build. You do games and activities. You do team building where they're going to talk to each other. They're going to share their thoughts. And you're going to break them down. They're like, oh, I feel comfortable because I'm, I'm seeing what these people are thinking. Planning, major amount of planning. Um, be very accurate with your planning and getting it done well ahead of time so everybody feels comfortable. Like you can come through every single thing you do in your activities, in your planning. You're like, oh, okay, we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do this next. And if you have a great process of planning the events, you'll be ready for the actual event and it won't give your student leaders anxiety and the anxiety of actually running the actual event It'll come off smooth and the other students will feel comfortable with it. Phone conversations. We talk about this all the time. Phone conversation is never going to go away. They always have to, they do not know how to talk to adults sometimes. They don't know how to email adults sometimes. Uh, so one things we have to talk about. Financial basics. They're not going to know about budgets, budget requests, uh, purchase requests. Uh, my budget was not existent this year. I don't know about where you guys were at in your particular groups, but budgets, they're not going to understand that. So we're going to have to teach all those things again, because only your seniors know. Robert's rules of order. Love this because it'll help out with your meetings, your, pro or your process of brainstorming, getting people to actually communicate with each other in an organized manner and to be able to hear each other. That's going to be huge. The next one is advanced skill sets, talking with people in authority. Persuasive and analytical skills. As advisors, teachers, we need to step back for them to learn. I don't know about you. Uh, what I think, what I found this year, especially in the hybrid situation, when we started to try to do events and activities, my admin was saying, hey, you can have these events, great, but you can't use students to, to set up or clean up afterwards. So it kind of fell onto my shoulders. And then not only that, then I got, I got other staff members to help me out. And when I couldn't get staff members, I grabbed my family members. <laughs> my in-laws have never worked so hard in a non-school year uh, at being fully, uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, so having to find those things. So we're actually going to have to learn to take the step back and go, hey, it's back in the kids' hands again. But we have to trust them with that. And the trust comes at a high price. We got to make sure that they're ready to be able to communicate and understand that they can work together with other people and that they have to actually embrace other people's feelings, which for teenagers, embrace other people's feelings, sometimes they don't really get that. It's like, what do I get out of it? Hey, we're going to have to go on that whole different factor. All right, summer trainings can uh, continue. We must understand the following. So this is, I'm going to give this to my students right away. So like, we're all on the same page for them to like, it's kind of like their homework before our first gathering uh, in July. Find something you like about every student you work with and continue to compliment on those things. So you're going to have to find that with every single people, person in your group. Balance being a teacher or a friend or mentor. Students want to talk to others who they can relate to, relate with, excuse me, and be heard. So this can be students and staff. Do your best to understand the personal, social, emotional, financial family and other challenges we're all going through. Learn and call students by their names as often as possible. So those name games, if you've ever done any link crew events, great opportunity, those name games, get those students involved right away. Team working, make them play those games where they don't realize that they're making these bonds. Um, 
Remember little facts about each other. Plug them in the conversation. Learn about their interests, hobbies, and goals. They don't realize that they all have this, a lot of the same interests and goals. They don't because they don't talk. They don't talk about that unless it's their clique. They're people that are really close to them. They don't want to take that chance. That's, and so by you providing these different games and opportunities, you're giving that opportunity to them. Learn their culture. Being relevant is important to them. Um, I, I hate to say it. One, um, the Day of the Dead. Years ago, the movie came out, uh, the Disney movie. Um, and right now I'm totally like losing the name of the movie. Can anybody help me out? The movie about Day of the Dead for Disney. Coco. Coco. Thank you. I learned more about Day of the Dead from Coco than I ever had figured out before. And I was like embarrassed that I had actually taken that long to figure it out at my high school that I hadn't known that. Um, be authentic. Try, don't try too hard to fit into their culture, but make it an effort to do so. If you don't know, you can ask them. Do a little Google research. Use relevant, personal, funny, and embarrassing stories. My son is in my ASB class as a junior, and he is afraid sometimes when I open my mouth and when I start talking about family things. <laughs> He's like, oh, please don't talk about it, Dad. Um, so, but it's our connection. It's how students relate to me. Um, anytime you can incorporate slightly in embar uh, embarrassing and vulnerable stories or laugh at past challenges you had when growing up, the better rapport you will have with them, you know, um, especially this year, you know, Hey, I would told them, I'm like, I was D for done as a student. I was not a good student. I had to go to community college and figure out what I want to do. And I paid for classes and I paid with time to get things done. Is that something you want to do right now? Uh, because we have all these students that have been doing badly or having struggling in the distance learning situation. Chat with students about their lives outside of class time. Praise, acknowledge others more. Treat everyone as an equal. No human is better than any other, despite age, title, income, gender, race, etc. We're all in this together. And we're all in this life together. Oh, so this uh, will let you know. Um, some of the activities I'm going to be doing is this or that. Uh, what do we have in common? Serious questions uh, to share out. And then, of course, cross the line. And I have, uh, when I do cross the line, I kind of reduced it down. It's not as heavy just to start off the year, just because I, uh, I have an, a, a later advanced version when we get to know each other on a deeper level. Right now, I want to kind of keep it lighter, but we want people to share commonalities with each other and bond with each other. Um, and then on the next thing I wanted to share before, because we're, we're already moving through a lot of time. Um, when you're done with your training for the day, and I, I'm going to host three different trainings for my school uh, leaders. Um, we're going to do something unifying different every single time. Sing the school site fight song, do the cha-cha slide, learn a TikTok dance, uh, and do Wally Acha. I will tell you, I am terrible at Wally Acha. I will have one of my link crew leaders do that for us because I do not have the skill sets to sit to, to talk at the same time and do the actions. But to give these students an opportunity with the activities for team building, as well as getting to know each other and the bonding, I think will be pay off extremely well for the school year and the planning the events. All right, so let me stop share right now. Okay, I went through that really fast. This recording will be available to everybody. Um, the slides, of course, will be available as well. But we have another, we have 10 minutes right now that we're going to be able to like, hey, what are some of the things? Because again, this is what I love about CATA is the assets we have are our people. What are some of the ideas of things that you would do to create bonding or team building for your leaders? I know a lot of people would try to sometimes look at doing a, a, re, a retreat for your executive officers, kind of not something that's going to be happening right now. Um, what, what are some things you're going to be looking at doing? Sandy, I'm sorry. Are you saying talking or no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just saw this movie. Um, so the one thing I was thinking about, okay, um, Catacamp coming up. Virtual again, we know that's kind of a different. Our students want to, don't want to go on Zoom, right? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to attend CATA camp at Hanford West High School. We're going to use my classroom for all of the, the larger gathering opportunities. 
And then I have the three classrooms next to me that are going to be used for the different um, councils. So when they have their council meetings, we're going to bring in food. So we have time to get together. And then every single time we're going to have a time for bonding and debriefing together. So it's an encouraging thing. Like, like students are like, oh, yeah, they're kind of excited about doing a virtual, but at Hanford West because they're going to still have that bonding, not on the grand scale as UC Santa Barbara or Santa Clara, but that opportunity to get together. So has anybody thought of any ideas themselves? So yeah. um, what, what I'm going to do, um, you know, they have, we have the regular student, then we have the premium student for camp. Mm -hmm. So my executives and my upperclassmen who choose to go, are going to go to the, the advanced or premium class and then I have my freshmen, they're going to go to the freshman class and I'm going to kind of do what you do, but I'm going to separate them by the, by, you know, by the, the freshmen and then the upperclassmen so that they can kind of get to know each other. But then after camp that next week, that's when we're going to do our retreat at school so that everybody can get together right afterwards. Okay. Hey, Joe, are you going to try to do something in maybe so was it September, October, like you do before, you know, where you, the teachers are gone and you do your little the student conference. Yeah. Yes, um, we are. Area C is going that direction to an in-person um, student conference in October. But the, I, CADA is also doing a virtual uh, conference as well, because we do know that there are some areas that are not going to travel. Um, in, in all districts. And it might be a money situation. It might be uh, students li missing class time, things like that. Um, so I I've, have I've talked to my superintendent and he has given the approval as of right now to do so. Joe, what, um, also the one thing about, remember the uh, training in September, the Mondays in September, we're going to do the training. Right. Yeah, that's the, that would be the student conference that we're going to be doing uh, on Mondays. Uh, I, salt, I can't remember the tagline. <laughs> salt. Salt. That's right. It was salt. Yeah. But it was, it's on Mondays. It's going to be only two hour or hour and a half, hour and a half on all the Mondays in uh, September. The second, third, and fourth Monday. Three, the first three Mondays. So you can have different students going to each one, uh, and it'll be different topic areas. You can look at different things. Uh, and so it'll be really great for students to be able to figure out different ways that like relate to them. And they don't have to be on for a long period of time over four days in a row. I was, I was thinking about doing a retreat um, and just, we do a senior lock-in. So I was thinking about doing like a lock-in for student council um, just so that way they can have the whole, we usually go, cause we usually go to a camp and, and do a, like a, a weekend, but the camp's not open yet. So I was thinking about doing it at school um, just again to bring them together and they like to stay up all night, which is not what I like to do, but <laughs> they really like it and they miss it a lot. So I was thinking, well, we could do it at school, but some sort of lock-in um, probably in July. We just had a, uh, a school barbecue, a school picnic uh, this last Friday and staff and students. And uh, they're like, Hey, when are we going to have this again? I'm like, uh, they're like, hey, let's do this in August. I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay. I'm like, they're like, we'll, we'll do exactly the same way. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Water gun fights. We got a splash chair because no dunk tanks allowed. Um, and this, then the staff member showed up and I hate to say it, but they armed their own children with water guns to go after other teachers. So yeah, they created teams. And uh, so we're like, oh, maybe we should actually use this to our advantage and create teams for doing events throughout rallies and stuff like that through the entire year. So teachers are bringing their own, creating their own teams. So, because those are the people they relate to. I kind of wanted to ask from the student's perspective, um, 
what did they like about this year that they want to keep for this next year? Like, were there any virtual things that they want to keep? Um, you know, do they like partially virtual meetings or do they not like them at all? Uh, Cause we've been kind of doing the hybrid and it's been working out well, people in, in on campus um, and people at home, but even my people on campus, they are, they're online, but they're in another teacher's classroom. So we're not like 50 kids in one trying to do our business meeting. So that's actually been working. So I kind of want to get their perspective and see if, you know, how do we want to plan this next year? Cause I feel like it's not gonna, I don't know. I'm still scared to plan. Cause I don't know if it's going to go back all the way to normal or are we still going to be in this weird, weird phase. Mm -hmm. Team build. Yeah. I was, I'm reading the chat as long as we go along too. Um, oh, okay. I love the leadership camping in gym. Yeah. Well, the other one I was, you know, it's going like you were talking about doing some kind of picnic or something in like Fresno, we got Woodward Park. So I was going to take leadership to Woodward Park and try to do some bonding there and do socially distance tag. <laughs> something, you know, to just kind of get them to work to, you know, to, to meet each other. Because I got all kinds of new people coming in. People have never, you know, um, been on campus, you know. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely going to be a strange, strange year, uh, coming up just to kind of acclimate everybody back to school. Yeah. To, to build on what you said, Tom. Uh, so I started the year with 93 students in my three classes. And then I had the uh, flip side, uh, recruiting. I have 137 people who want to be in ASB for next year. They won't give me a fourth class, but we're going to fit everybody. I told them, I said, we will find a way to fit everybody inside of our classroom in three classes to be people involved. And so I, I, I've got a lot of people who do not have any of that leadership experience, but they want to see change and they want to take, they want to take the initiative. They're taking the initiative to get involved. So it's the flip side of too, like we talk about, Oh, we're worried about these people. But then there's other people like, Hey, I'm embracing this restart. You know, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm like, yeah, we got to see that too. We have both, both different groups on campuses. Anybody we're switching guess? this year. We're switching from a four rotating block to a uh, straight six schedule. So that's the first time I've ever been involved because I went to central and I know nothing else besides four and four. Um, so trying to figure out my leadership. So Joe, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm doing a leadership one of no titles, totally stole it from Nestor over at Roosevelt. Um, and then I'll do uh, my leadership two with all of my actual kids with positions and my commissioners, ASB officers, so, you know, new year, new me, new leadership. Yeah. I also have a new principal starting this year as well. And I told her, hey, we'll try anything to see what we can do. And I'm all, it is wide open. And if it, if it doesn't work out next year like that, we can change it back. We can make some changes. So growth is going to be our watchword. <laughs> um, we're going to, we're in about 26 seconds left before we're going to go back into the main room. And then um, I know that we have Shauna and Aaron are going to be sharing some information with us as well. So it'd be great. Does anybody have eight? We have 12 seconds. Have any of you done like, um, like a little mini camp or uh, kind of jump start to the year over the summer because this is my second year doing it but obviously with distance learning it really is like my first year and I would like to do something this summer um, and I was just curious if anyone's done anything like that I have to I, I, I would love some help on that too I know I'm planning, I took my very first year, I took a group of my students to the, um, to the, um, oh my gosh, I can't even remember it so long ago, out in Woodland, and they had just for the um, leadership group, and I know that they had some, like, games and icebreakers in the beginning, and then they kind of went into different, they could pick different sections that they wanted to go to, uh, depending on what they were wanting. So I was thinking of maybe trying to do something similar to that. And then they had obviously like their guest speakers that were kind of more motivational. 
And so um, I was going to kind of try and do something similar to that and then see if I could maybe find like a keynote or someone maybe from the high school that could come out and kind of motivate the kids because I'm at a middle school. That's a good idea. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if you guys are cool with that, because I'm presenting for you. Oh, good, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Woo! Also, please excuse my, I have like pigtails and I have a pajamas on right now, you guys, it was PJ day. <laughs> and I didn't change, because this is more comfortable. So I'm gonna share my screen. This is being, somebody asked if it was being recorded, it is being recorded. And I believe Jeff will send those out or make them available on Kata's something website, yeah. Exactly, yes. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have the right thing up. Okay. And then I can send you guys the link to this presentation as well. Is that okay, Ron? I think that's fine, right? Absolutely. Um, I'll, sh I'll actually share my screen and then send it to you at the same right now. So you guys can follow along on there if you would like. And it has every, but actually has the high school presentation on there as well. Um, and you guys can see, this is actually, do you guys have a million tabs open right now? I feel like this is like no tabs open. <laughs> like, Seven tabs is nothing. <laughs> um, I'm going to share this with you guys right now. And I'll, completely, assuming that we're going to come back completely now. So my name is Nairi Carcassian. I'm in Fresno, California in Central Unified at Middle School, El Capitan Middle School. Um, our school serves about 750 kids. Um, and let's copy links. We're seeing all our secrets. No. Um, let's see if I can get the chat up again. Um, and we, we started out the school year, there we go, hopefully I sent you the right one. <laughs> um, we started out the school year distance learning and now we are hybrid. So we like just a month ago, maybe like not that long ago, it's, I think it's only been, nope, I don't want to share, I want to present. Um, it's only been about, I think three or four weeks we've been hybrid. Um, and so there's some of our kids. This is the first week of school. Um, super cute. I don't know about you guys. I was super excited to see students again. I kind of all year was like, no, I don't miss my kids. <laughs> and, and then it was the first day back and I was like, I miss you guys so much. Um, and I actually had a different presentation put together. And then Joe asked to kind of speak to, um, how I'm going to train kids, uh, when we come back completely assuming that we're going to come back completely next year and how we're going to deal with anxiety in middle school and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know for those of you who are in middle school right now, I'm going to be honest. Don't tell Joe. I feel like I'm having the opposite problem. All my, this is going to sound really bad, but all my students want to do is um, be next to each other and jump into each other's arms. <laughs> they're just, they're like trying to give each other piggyback rides. I don't know what they're doing. We're trying to keep them COVID safe and friendly, but they just all want to be, super close to each other. I feel like I'm having to pull them apart. I hope you, it's good. Lisa, I love you. Lisa's nodding her head. <laughs> I'm not alone. No, but I kind of feel like, um, and I, I feel like junior high and high school may be different in that. Um, and I'll talk more about that right now. I'm going to exit out my downloads right there. So um, this is other years and you guys all know, I feel like I keep reflecting on all the other years. And um, these eighth graders that I have, the seventh graders don't know anything. The eighth graders um, also didn't get the end of their eighth grade school year. So now that we're in the end, I keep bringing stuff up. And I'm like, remember when we did this? Remember? And they're like, Ms. Carcassian, we didn't do any of that. I'm like, oh my God, that's right. We didn't even get there. So um, I think it's, it's kind of like we started from scratch. But um, I was just reflecting on what we did in other years. And I, I kind of had to re... I don't re teach myself to reteach the kids because I forgot that I don't have kids who have been through this part of the school year, um, which was, which was interesting, but usually, uh, we do, I do, everything is hands-on. Everything is the kids together. We do all kinds of team building activities where they touch each other and are right next to each other. That sounds right. But you know, um, and they just, and especially middle school, I feel like they just learn by doing in my opinion, in my personal opinion, they learn by doing, and that's, I think, been the hardest thing, is that they're not, they're in person, they don't know each other, um, and all that great stuff. So, um, those are some pictures. This kitty in and out for the first time here. <laughs> um, so, this year, what I did a lot of was, um, 
I'm going to get to our faces are in my way. Um, it was difficult because we weren't there. It's so weird. Even those of you, I don't know, who are in hybrid, we're in hybrid right now and we have A group and B group and it's still so weird. And I love that the kids are at least on campus and we get to do stuff in real life, but it's so weird because you're trying to do the same thing twice, but not bore them. And you're still trying to train them for the end of the school year. And it's like, I had to remind them how to go into a teacher's classroom the other day because we yeah. did at the beginning of the school year. Cause mm -hmm. you know, um, so what I've been doing this year is grouping the students by jobs and level of experience. So I put them in groups and they all had jobs, for example, like posters, flyers, and more. Or we had a Zoom room events once a month, every, so the first Wednesday of every month, we just called it Zoom rooms. And it was where kids and teachers, there were chaperones in each Zoom room. They got, they got to sign up for whatever Zoom room they wanted. So for example, one was like a bunch of Among Us rooms, Roblox, Kahoot, Gim Kit, um we even just had like art rooms like kids wanted oh anime was a big one i don't know about your if you're middle schoolers all they wanted to do was watch anime and talk about it. so we had those kind of things and um i had the different groups in charge of different things um i made them go into their so they had captains and co-captains eighth grade and seventh grade so my idea behind this was to kind of have the eighth graders with what knowledge they had from last year train the seventh graders even though we were on zoom and they would have to actually take minutes and send them to me like they were in a little ASB meeting. So I figured that would be good training. But I, and I just modeled everything for them. Every single thing that I did online, they watched me do it and helped me do it. Because so now they all know how to make a forum. They all know how to do slides. They can do, they can create present. They all know how to use Canva, everything. Um, throughout the school year, and I feel like this is kind of where it gets into the, um, creating a more comfortable environment in COVID times and kind of lessening the anxiety. This is where I started to do it kind of halfway through this year. I started to take volunteers to actually come onto campus for events. So we had, we had to do like yearbook pictures and we had to do um, setting up for the hybrid return. We had to make a safety video for when the kids return. And I started inviting my leadership students and some other students from just the school that weren't even in leadership that I thought would be good to kind of um, come back on campus uh, to make them feel more comfortable. And we did a lot of videos and put them, we have a news station, we have a news channel. It's called Eagle One News and we show it every Monday morning. But we, we put those videos in there and I think it kind of eased the kids into coming back like, oh, there's already kids coming back on campus. This is safe. This is how we're gonna enter campus. This is what we're going to do. This is what the classrooms will look like, which I'm sure a lot of your schools did. But I feel like bringing those kids back a little bit at a time um, really helped. Um, and communication, communication was key. And I think next year communication is gonna be key too. One of the parents told me recently I, that they appreciated all the, uh, I felt like I was bugging them. <laughs> I felt like I was sending out too much stuff, but I feel like they also felt safe and comfortable with their students on campus, even before we went back, because I was sending them so many details. Um, I'd rather have them have too much information than not enough. Um, so what I'm gonna do for next year, um, we'll see. <laughs> um, I'll answer questions in just a second. I'm gonna get through this and I'll answer any questions you guys have, and I'm happy to share anything I have. Um, so one of the things our principal implemented this year is that he, he had us so on Mondays in homeroom. He had us send out wellness check, or we had a wellness check, and it was a Google form. So the kids would fill out wellness checks every Monday, and that's something I want to continue with my leadership classes next year because I feel like it was just a chance for the kids. And there were serious questions on there, and there were fun questions on there. So it was just kind of like what you know, one through five. How do you feel today? How did you sleep last night? Um, how? How was your weekend? Because we do it on Mondays. Um, tell what was one good thing about your weekend. Uh, how do you know? And you can put all kind. Of, and especially for because I think a big big thing, and I think it's been a big thing. I mean, I know it's been a big thing the last couple of years. But when we come back, social emotional is going to be so big, and I know admin is going to hit so hard on it. I feel like the wellness checks are going to uh, they're going to serve in so many different ways, just for ourselves as teachers, but also for admin and for the school because that just builds data and then. You know, that way, if you do, if we do have kids that are, we're a little bit worried about, it's kind of a safe place for them to put information because it's, it's, it's not anonymous, but it's, you know, only the teacher can see it. So I'm going to definitely, I will definitely be um, continuing that. I think I'm, I will, I'm going to do it every Monday. So with my leadership kids, because 
Sometimes they don't want to tell you out loud. Um, safe team building activities. I haven't quite figured this out yet, but I'm not, it's so hard, you guys. I know you know. I don't know. Are we going to wear masks next year? Are we coming back with all the kids? <laughs> um, but I'm just uh, trying to build um, a database for myself. And we use Google. We're a Google district. Um, but I'm trying to build my Google Drive with all kinds of safe team building activities. And like I mentioned, and a lot of my kids now are like, Among Us is old, Miss Carcassian. But even just playing Among Us in our classrooms on Zoom um, was super COVID safe and the kids loved it. Um, we also just even playing, I don't know if you guys have seen Gim Kit or um, Blook It, I'll send those to you in a minute. They're kind of like um, better cahoots. Um, even those, cause they're more interactive have like kind of brought the kids together. And um, there, it's just weird because you have to think of virtual safe ways for them to team build. I also have been creating videos and stuff like that, like fun videos I can for the spirit week. So I kind of do like these um, promos. So it's a preview. So my leadership kids know what's going on, but the rest of the school doesn't. And then I let my students rate it. I let them rate how good my videos were. And they love it because it's kind of like they're, um, I don't want to say like roasting me, but <laughs> uh, it's fun because they're like 10 out of 10, Ms. Carcassian, a thousand out of 10. And then they'll start arguing with, like, with each other. No, I like this part. So it's kind of just getting, you know, the conversation going, I feel like more than anything. Um, my plan for next year is to have the eighth graders do end of the year project with how to videos so they can leave their legacy. So they're going to leave how to videos for the seventh graders uh, for next year and also for the incoming sixth graders. So this is my plan to train <laughs> the incoming sixth graders and um, the because I'll have new seventh graders that haven't been in leadership next year as well. Um, I'm already taking student volunteers at all of the end of the year major events. So I am training and students who I don't have in leadership right now, but will be in lead, that I'm gonna recruit for leadership for next year, I'm already inviting them to stuff. They don't even know. <laughs> I'm just inviting them to volunteer at stuff because why not? And if their parents, um, I have a lot of, because we have A group and B group and hybrid that come to campus and then we have D group that's at home. And I even with admin approval, I let D kids come volunteer because they're gonna be in my leadership classes next year and that's their only opportunity to come onto campus. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, if you guys saw Shauna, she's at, um, we are the feeder middle school for her high school. So we're planning on, um, and there's been a lot of, we have a brand new high school, so there's gonna be a lot of movement. So we are now gonna be the only feeder into her high school, which is really exciting. So we created, we're calling it the empire. And next year's, well, next year's gonna be the empire and the year after is gonna be the empire strikes back. Although I've never seen Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I did suggest that title and then realized I had never seen Star Wars. Um, but we are trying to create this whole, um, you know, environment and culture for the students to be Grizzlies and to feed into that school. So hopefully that will start with a summer training this year and we get approval for that. Um, and we have, uh, we are building that right now. So I can, I would be happy to send you guys our structure for that as well. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, I don't know about you guys, but our hybrid um, I think the most awkward and um, socially challenging, maybe anxiety ridden thing for the students was, or still is, are the mornings when they get to school because they can, there's a half an hour window where they can arrive to school and they're all just standing there far away from each other. And I don't, I, it, it's real awkward <laughs> for the everyone. So I don't know if they just don't know what to do or if it's because they haven't been at school all year. The seventh, I feel like the seventh graders are still sixth graders. They're not sure what to do. They don't know anybody. So this week is a spirit week. Today we were a virtual only, but we have plans to play music the whole rest of the week during morning, that half an hour and during break, we only have a 15 minute break. And then they, they grab their lunches and go home. They don't even stay for lunch. Um, also, it's a spirit week called Chicken Week. And I'm not going to explain it. It's a long story, but it's all based around chickens and everything has to do with chickens. And we usually do it more during spring break time, but it got pushed back this year because we wanted to do it when kids were on campus. So in the 15-minute break that they have, we're going to be hiding Easter eggs all around campus. And then they're going to be doing a virtual scavenger hunt. So we actually have a Google Classroom for the whole entire school uh, because I don't know if you guys have Google Classroom, but up to a thousand, I believe it's up to a thousand 
um, students can join a Google Classroom and we are right underneath that. So uh, it's kind of gonna be like, I don't wanna say murder mystery, but clues, if you've ever done a virtual murder mystery, clues are gonna be released at different times throughout the day before break. And there's gonna be all eggs hidden all over campus, but there's one golden egg every day that has like a bunch of gift cards in it and a teacher or a staff member has it. So they're gonna have to, Stay connected to our Instagram or the, the Eagle's Nest, which is the Google Classroom, and wait for those clues and try and figure out where it is. So we're just trying to do stuff like that before school and at break um, so it's not so awkward. And stuff like that, I think, kind of gets the kids, um, you know, talking to each other. And um, they're outdoors and they have their masks on. Um, our district, I feel like, is a little lax, so they were... We want them to talk to each other. I'm going to be honest. Is it um, real eggs? Like the real like plastic eggs? Like when you say you yeah. have eggs? Yeah. yeah. I bought like a bunch of them at Target <laughs> one year and I still have yeah. a million left. And then I found, because we're the Eagles and I always call it so the Eagles Nest, the gold. So I found gold eggs at Target and they're, they're big. I, my, my camera's flipped, so I don't know where I am, but they're big. So we're going to um, hide them all over campus. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Another thing, this is the last, I know I'm probably talking too long, but the last thing, um, and this happened by accident, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you guys about it because I think it's the most amazing accident that's ever happened. One of our history teachers who the kids absolutely love, um, all last week kept getting pranked. So his classroom was filled with post-its all over the place. Then they butcher papered his whole classroom so he couldn't get in and couldn't get to his desk. Then they put a bunch of little tiny cups all over his floor filled with, I don't even know what they were filled with and he couldn't walk into his classroom. It was staff members pranking him. He still doesn't know who it is. So instead of, so he decided to make it a whole entire history lesson and has, um, you know, during uh, like on CSI, or whatever, law and order, when they put all the suspects pictures up on a wall and they have lines all connecting them to each other. He has created a whole entire board with all of the staff members and the teachers pictures on them and kids who are accomplices. And all last week, um, it became such a big deal. So then of course I capitalized on this because the kids love it. And we started putting it on our Instagram and taking votes and polls and, um, at, to see who the kids think it is. And I think this is the most interactive thing we've done all year. We've had the biggest response from this. It's insane because it was just, you know, teachers being fun and just excited to be back at school. And now tomorrow there's going to be a trial and all the teachers are on trial tomorrow at break. Um, so I feel like leave it up to history teachers, but we're cap like we went live last week. We went live on our Instagram. One of the sped teachers was inter walk running around interviewing people. We had all these kids log into the Instagram live. I don't think I've ever gone live at school before. Um, so that kind of, so if you guys, <laughs> uh, I think it's the best thing we've done on campus and all the kids are into it. All the staff is into it. Every, like no one, they can't stop talking about it. It's the best thing ever. So, um, my suggestion to you next year at the beginning of the year is to start pranking some of your teachers and then um, accuse them on a big giant board. Uh, it, it's, it's the most amazing thing. So that kind of got the, it kind of broke the ice. I'm going to be honest, because they've been two weeks of hybrid. Um, it's kind of awkward at times on campus. And this just happened to break the ice and it wasn't even on purpose, but we just, you know, as activities directors, I think we take up every opportunity we can to capitalize on like whatever we see uh, that the kids are into. So I think that's what's really important for next year too, is to just take whatever works and run with it because these are weird times guys. <laughs> but um, that's what we've been doing. That's how it's going to go. Those are my plans for next year. You can steal them all. <laughs> but um, any questions? And then um, I think Ron, we're opening up this time. I think we still have like five or more minutes we have a minute and 56 seconds oh, but shoot. I'm, I talk so I'm, much. I'm, so sorry. I'm messaging Joe to see if if high school wants a little more discussion time they're too, not then... done Shauna <laughs> talks way more than I do <laughs> oh perfect okay but I can uh, oh and I think uh, uh, Joe said if you if you all want to if you feel comfortable putting your name and emails in the chat so we can send you any right I think that's what he said what are we sending? We got kicked back. He asked to if people want to put their emails in the chat if they want resources or share stuff with each other. Oh, okay. I thought that's what he said. 
I wasn't. I wasn't. In the chat I wasn't hundred percent sure on that. I don't. I wasn't know. sure I'll if we're going to be my email, and if you want anything, I will send it to you. How about that? Is that like less intrusive? <laughs> but I don't know if you guys have any. I almost just gave you guys my password, not my email. But if you guys have any questions or want anything or want to talk about anything, I don't know if you guys tell me the great ideas you guys have because we're all going to need them for next year. <laughs> If I can jump in and, oh, I'm sorry, Denise, go ahead. Oh, Ron, you're, we're probably on the same track. No, I was just wondering before you even, what are you doing to celebrate the kids who made it into ASB? Anyone have some fun new ideas? That's what I thought. <laughs> we, we let everyone in because we're trying to grow our program. So. Yeah. You mean into your leadership classes? Mm -hmm. yeah. We had 18 this year, and the goal for next year was 30, and we have 39 signed up. So, yeah, I'm finding that because we were not very visible at all this year. Um, in fact, they even took away a class for me, and I only met with my students once a week on Mondays, and it really deflated the program. So, yeah, we're going to start fresh, and um, my goal is to just be visible in every way possible. If, if I can just share something logistically really quickly, especially with middle school, parents like to know what's going on uh, and calendars and dates and things. So this is the hub. This is what I use to uh, share information over the summer. This is like before our kids have Google Classroom or have, you know, because again, they're coming in from the elementary school district. So I have all of the information. This is a Google site. I keep it all in one place. Uh, the, so the our summer school meeting or summer meeting schedule, uh, the agreement, uh, videos, information on going to Catacamp, uh, our calendar. What I've decided to do this year is, with the exception of when we go come back in August, just like last summer, all of our trainings and all of our meetings are going to be over Zoom. That way, no matter where kids are, if they're camping, if they're at the beach, wherever they are. They can jump in. I had 100% attendance at all of our summer meetings last summer, which was the best attendance that I had uh, for as long as I've been having summer meetings. So I'm going to continue that. And if you want to see this, uh, I'll go ahead and share this in the chat. Perfect. All right. So, um, Shana, are you at a position where you can share your screen or you would like me to share? I can share my screen. Outstanding. I can do that right now. Um, here we go. Um, share my screen and Chrome. Fun fact, while I'm sharing, I was teaching history this year and accidentally shared my emails while I thought I was sharing a video. That was fun. Accidents happen, people. Oops, not share, present. Um, okay, so I'm going to skip through to my part. There's Nairis. Um, so my name is Shauna Souza. I am the activities director at Central East High School. Um, and I'm going to move all your faces over because I don't like where they are in my share screen. Um, okay, so no, Joe, I don't, asked, I don't think you're sharing. <gasps> no, can you not? Um, Do you want me to share? Now. Yes. Good Yay, job. thanks, Nairis. <laughs> you're welcome. Nairis, the, the MVP there. Okay, so Joe asked me to share some ideas that I have for the fall, um, which is ironic because anytime anyone asks me to plan things for the fall, I keep telling them no, because I'm so nervous with all of the changes, the tiers, the protocols, six feet, three feet, mask, no mask, and I just get stressed and I don't want to plan things and then have to change it. Um, but it is time that we all face the music and start planning things. And today's um, Zoom was, you know, training our, the next generation of leaders. But it's not just the next generation of leaders. It's also the next generation of our programs. What is it going to be like now? And we've had this year and a half-ish off. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like full force everything from the year planning right now in this semester. I have a senior night every single night this week. Um, but what are we doing as, a, you know, as our leadership program and what can we get rid of that maybe wasn't working beforehand? Um, personally, we were doing senior spread. We had to bus every single senior to our stadium and take a huge picture that was the centerfold of the yearbook. That is not going to be a thing anymore because 
everybody kind of forgot about it over COVID. And you know what? It was a lot of work for just one page in the yearbook. And we're getting rid of that. And so uh, my whole point today is maybe there's something that's a tradition at your school that you're doing just because it's a tradition and it's time to get rid of it. And, you know, use this opportunity to revamp your own personal program. Um, so I have alumni ASB days, which I'm going to be doing because like many of you, I um, am very senior heavy this year. And I've been that way with this class since they were sophomores. And now that they're seniors and they're all leaving, they haven't gotten an opportunity to train who's going to take over their positions. So I'm going to do uh, alumni ASB days and then shout out to Kristen Patton because she's the one who gave me this idea at virtual CATA um, convention. Uh, I'm going to have an ASB day at our very first rally. I'm going to have my former ASB students help train those kids on how to put up a poster. How do we, you know, um, set up the gym on rally day and different things like that. And then we'll do what I call family dinner. We usually do family dinner um, on Thanksgiving, uh, around the holidays before Christmas break. And so we will do an, a, an alumni and current student family dinner. So I'm really excited about that. Um, first event back to school is gonna be my wow week. We start school at Central in, um, I'm sorry, on Wednesday. And so I'm going to um, work really hard to make sure Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the first days back to school and they are full of events. Icebreakers in all of your classes, a club preview day. I do a club preview day so that kids know if they want to start a new club. So it's not signing up. It's just, these are the clubs that are available if you wanna start a new club. Lunchtime activities and different things just to make it exciting on campus. I also throw a rally on the third day of school but you know what? They haven't had anything. And I want to make sure that this is the full focus of my kids when we start next year. Um, also, I do club day. I'm really excited. We are starting. Um, sorry, someone, an admin is calling me at this very moment uh, because, you know, work never stops. Um, so we are doing a link crew for the very first time this year. So I'm really excited about club day and the prospect of my link crew leaders being able to show their freshmen what clubs to sign up for. I'm in a really weird situation. I said Clovis, or I'm sorry, Central East, no, no, I said Clovis, Central East High School. Um, we just changed our name and broke away from our West Campus. Tom is here, shout out Tom. Tom is now Central High School. I am now Central East High School. So for the very first time, I'm gonna be my own high school with freshmen. Freshmen were going over to West Campus um, and so Link Crew, it's the very first time, and I'm excited to be able to get those kids welcomed on our campus. But on the other hand, I have possible sophomores who've never been on our campus before, and most of you will also, but I might have juniors because they were freshmen at West, sophomores online, and now juniors on campus who've never even seen our campus. So I'm excited about Link Crew, the possibility of you know, club days, showing them what we have to offer at East. Um, and then uh, with homecoming, we are still partnered with West for our athletic events. So it is the hundredth anniversary and I'm super excited to plan that. I've been actually thinking about it since I took over this job. And for the very first time this year, cause I've been talking about it and never done it. We are gonna have an alumni dinner um, on the first Monday of homecoming week. And we are going to have a tri-tip dinner where people can watch football practice. I've already cleared it with my football coach. And the money, I already told him he can have the money if he put in the work. And I just basically organized the whole thing. And I don't need any money and I don't want to have to cook the food because he has parents for that. So that's something I'm super excited about. I'm really excited to be able to plan that event and make things happen. And then, of course, we do a homecoming dance um, right after the football game underneath the scoreboard. So those are just a few events that I have planned for the start of the fall and just some really exciting things that I want to make sure my leaders are focused on. And those are the things that I've decided are most important for the fall semester. So that is all for me. Sorry, I'm going too far into Aaron's presentation. <laughs> all right. And now we have Aaron Tobias from, oh my goodness, Dinuba High School. I almost like really <laughs> forgot where she was from. Do you want me to keep sharing for you, Aaron? Yeah, keep sharing that way we don't have to switch it over but there you go um so i'm just going to talk a little bit about um link crew and kind of some ideas that um i've kind of had to work work through and figure out uh, as we go so um we did a link crew day um on campus um before school started 
about a month or so ago. I can't remember how long ago that was. Um, but we just kind of had to think about how are we going to be on campus still in a safe way with our mask, staying six, three feet apart, like Shauna said. Um, and so some of the games this is just, and I'm not sure if you guys did one too, or you were going to be doing one this summer. Um, but some of the games that worked um, were things like the fast fingers. So I have on there the just real, you, if you guys haven't um, been trained in, in link crew, there's just the how to play fast fingers. So the virtual curriculum that they gave us um, kind of worked a little bit for the socially distanced in person one. So I'm kind of using, or I was using some things that, um, that work in person, but now we're still socially distant. So fast fingers is a game that you can play while not having to um, be as close to each other. Um, the people tigers traps, uh, instead of running around, uh, we just kind of were right across from each other and played that game. Um, we did the lineup as well. So um, if you're familiar with link crew, they have everyone come down from the stadium or from the, the bleachers in the um, gym. Um, they all came down and we just did the lineup the same exact way, except for they were all spread out. So just kind of need to train. Um, and what I found was just train my link leaders in facilitating the freshmen because they're not, they're kind of just more spread out. So it seem, seemed like a little bit more of a difficult task. Also when they are switching and they usually, um, you know, have to put your hand, uh, you know, across from your leader or for the, from your partner and then when you're switching down, you kind of like high five, high five, high five. So we just did like the don't touch hands, but we're, you know, kind of close like that. Um, and then some things to think about. So just depending on your district, what's going on, how big your incoming freshman class is, um, stadium or the gym. So can you have everybody all at once in the gym? If you have low numbers, definitely you can just, you know, do it in there. But if you don't and you have a big group, um, can you do it in the stadium outside? So we did ours in the stadium outside. We have, um, 500 incoming freshmen and, um, it just took a little bit longer. So just planning that a little bit longer, fewer games, um, have it in the morning or have it in the evening would be something else. So I know that link crew always suggests, you know, 8am they come in first thing in the morning. Um, and so is that, is that a good time? Does that work now or would an evening type of thing work better? So just kind of looking at your, your, um, your schedule and see what works better. And if you're going to have to be outside, do you want to be in the sun? So, or should you do it in the evening where the sun's not beating down on them? Um, we actually had one kid who, you know, freshmen, just like eighth graders love to wear hoodies. Uh, it was one of the, you know, first warm days and he totally passed out in the middle of our line up and tell your partner. Um, so that's when I was like, maybe we should have done this in the, in the uh, evening when it wasn't as taught. Um, and then instead of doing our classrooms, cause you, I, in link crew, you get them into their groups and they all go into classrooms and they kind of have their little time with their freshmen. Um, we just kept them. Um, thank you, Ron, for uh, answering in the chat. So we just, um, kept them all out on the stadium, all in the stadium and the, on the grass on the, out on the field and just kind of did little groups. And so everyone was just out there together um, instead of sending them off to their classroom. So we did a, a modified version. It wasn't as full blown, you know, they didn't, they weren't in there for, they weren't out there for two hours like they are in their, their classrooms, but, um, but it just seemed to work. It was just shortened because it was out. The whole thing was outside, but just trying to give them something to kind of, come in and, and the purpose of link crew is just to make connections. So um, just figuring out what we can do for that. So that's my last slide. Right. <laughs> Shana, can you stop sharing for a second? Can I kick you out? Awesome. All right, we have limited amount of time left because we'd like to always end on time because we all have different things to do, I know. So we have nine minutes left. And uh, I believe Ron was telling me that middle school really didn't get an opportunity to share out so much with each other. So what I want to give you an opportunity is really take advantage of this. And when anybody's sharing out, either in my middle school or the high school, how can I work that out in my particular world? How would that work for me? So if we want to spend the last nine minutes sharing out any ideas you have of what you're going to do 
to start off your school year and train your leaders. I have a question if it's okay. Where do you guys find these great icebreaker getting to know you ideas? Is there a website you recommend or? Well, um, I've done it a few different places like the people in this meet <laughs> right here, um, uh, different CATA conventions. And of course, Google is our friend as well as the different resources that are out there. There are so many different resources, uh, but tapping the people around people I know is where I got a lot of my ideas. Okay. And, oh yes. Yeah, so Link Ron crew, is that, is Link crew a class throughout the entire year? Or is it just, how do you organize that? You know, I, I never did link crew because our school logistically uh, didn't ever fit. But this year, since like Shauna said, we're splitting up, we can actually do it now. <laughs> so she's laughing. She knows what I'm talking about. So is it a class like peer connectors or how do you run that? So, so on my campus, um, we, we had a class at one time. Um, and the benefits of having the class is that you have a dedicated time during the day to just talk about link crew and what are we going to do for our freshmen? Um, you know, how can we make that, those connections you have like that time and the space and you have the kids there and you can grade them. And, you know, that was my benefit for that. Um, we, because of the schedule got rid of link crew and they said, Hey, now can you just do link crew as a club? Um, which we do now, so it's, it doesn't have to be a class. So we do it as a club, but the students have to come in either at lunch or after school or whenever to meet together. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult for, um, for us. So it just, I feel like it's not as effective as it could be because of the lack of time and, and you have to compete with them after school sports or, or other lunch programs or you know lunch clubs that are going on. Um, so that's our struggle. Um, so you can do it either way. It just depends on how much time and if your district's willing to give you, uh, um, a class, a whole class. I have my, which isn't recommended, um, my leader, my advanced leadership. I have them all sign up for link crew and that's the class that we make link crew decisions in. So I can kind of still have a little bit of time for link crew, um, because it's usually my upperclassmen in there. But Link Crew suggests that you don't have your leadership kids be Link Crew leaders. But in the perfect world, uh, I kind of, I kind of use them all for the same exact thing. So it's you better if you have a Link Crew teacher that isn't the leadership teacher. That way you can I split and, and both tackle the because they're two big, you know, big jobs. So do you think you could? You think a peer connectors and Link Crew class could work in conjunction, or are they completely separate? Anybody? I, I see kind of a hand in hand kind of thing. Um, I as I said, uh, I love the idea of having a separate link crew coordinator and then the ASB, but I am both on my campus because uh, it's one, they just yeah, lump it in together um, because it is a lot of work. And I, I know my link crew program could be better if there was somebody to give it full attention that it needs because it can do a lot of great things. And it makes the connections, but we, we have link crew leaders in my ASB classes, but they're making a lot of link crew decisions at separate meetings outside of the class. And I know I threw it in the chat, but I'll give a vocal shout out to CATA leadership camps. I bring my student leaders to uh, CATA camps every summer. I think that most of us on staff do. So we not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk. Uh, and, uh, and so this summer is hopefully fingers crossed our final summer of virtual, and then we'll be back in person in, uh, 2022. So, uh, bringing students to leadership camp and then also, um, getting our student leaders into involved training, uh, with Scott Bakovich this summer at the end of the summer. So we'll be doing, we'll be doing both, uh, to help train up for, to get ready for the upcoming school year. Yeah, I mentioned in the high school one as well. We're going to do um, our ASB executive officer is going to do camp, but we're going to do it at site at school, do all the group things together as a group. And then they'll go to different classrooms to do their council meetings and do those activities. But bring them back and we'll have our meals together. And we're going to create that same kind of bonding experience. Of course, it's not Santa Barbara, 
and the beautiful weather and the ocean, but we're going to try to do as best we can in the Central Valley to do that as well. But it, to make those connections, because they, they missed camp so much. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out a way to make that same, that same team building or bonding. And you can do that with the middle school as well. All right. Any more ideas out there? Or questions. Or questions, yeah. Everybody's got it figured out? <laughs> We're all in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> um, you I think we're all just overwhelmed, so we don't know what to ask. Yeah. yeah. Usually at camp, um, because I, I take usually 10 to 12 kids to camp, um, then I have them come back and lead a camp for um, my whole ASB and student council. So um, this year I'm planning on doing that as well, just kind of holding them accountable to what they learn and figure out, you know, those icebreakers. And, and now you're going to come back on campus and lead. So um, that's usually kind of what ties into our um, ASB retreat. Um, so I'm hoping to do the same, excited about camp, see what we're going to see what those leaders will, will learn and be able to bring back. Um, and I'm excited about that. Denise, uh, to, to address your question in the chat, um, my students are excited. Uh, I always do a barbecue at my house and for all of the officers three times a year. And they're so excited that that is going to be allowed again. And so my admin is like, yeah, we want to be chaperoning that. So um, that celebration for new officers, barbecue. Uh, I will also say that I had uh, just had someone private message me. Is it too late to sign up for leadership camp? It is absolutely not too late to sign up for leadership camp. So Jeff, you want to give a quick plug while you're here? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's been like a love fest on camp over the last few minutes. It warms my heart. Um, yeah, we have registration open until June 10th. So you still have, gosh, almost a month to get registration in. Um, if you've never gone to camp before, you know, send a few kids, just, you know, a couple just to get a taste of it. If you've been before, I'm sure you're excited to send as many as you possibly can. Um, this is one of the rare years where there does not have to be an advisor attending with the students because we're not in person. So if you're like, I'm going to be on vacation that week, I can't go. I'm not taking my kids. You can actually just register for some of your students to attend. Uh, we have two levels. We're doing premium, which is gonna be uh, about 30 hours throughout the course of July 12th through the 16th. And they'll be broken up into councils and doing projects and networking with other students from around the state. And then we have the standard level, which is kind of more like a conference type of a feel. And that will be mostly afternoons throughout that week. And it's about 18 hours. Um, and they'll be watching keynotes and uh, getting our leadership curriculum, our uh, camp curriculum, I should say, um, and then some other fun stuff they'll get to watch and uh, participate in. But um, yeah, registration open until June 10th. They have been coming in and I know Erin is definitely excited because she was the first one to register. Uh, like the minute we opened up registration this year, Dinuba came through, it was like, oh, Erin's coming. So uh, we'd love to see you. Um, we had so many new faces, new schools join us last year. Um, it was really exciting because of the, the virtual and it was less expensive. So people were able to attend a little bit more. So. Um, it's a great way to just really build that foundation for the year. Um, I think, uh, as as Aaron said, she, I did the same thing. I might take my kids, and then we would schedule our. Um, I called it boot camp back in the day. A um, couple weeks after camp was over, and all my kids that went to camp were in charge of boot camping the rest of my leadership. So I took 16 every year, and then I had 70 in my classes, and uh, it was it was great because they took the lead with the training, and they were off and running and taking care of it. So cata1.org slash leadership camps. And uh, if you wanna reach out to me, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have all my contact information on that website. Thanks, Ron. I have a question. I'm Nicole Wirtz, I'm over at Heart High. And as this is my first year, not only in ASB, like just as a human in general, but now I'm gonna be a director. Um, I have a question about, I guess I'm running interviews right now for my new kids coming in and we're about to start with our eighth graders who have only had about a semester of junior high under their belt. And so I was wondering if there's any like words of wisdom or suggestions on like how to really like scope and decide who's ready for high school ASB. 
any help at all. <laughs> we, oh, hi, Nicole, it's Tracy from West Ranch. <laughs> hey, um, something that worked really well. I've only been doing ASB for four years and the first year we just did interviews and that, you know, just like a normal application process. But then the last three years, I don't know how this is going to work virtual or, you know, like in distance learning, but we started doing group interviews. And so we kind of gave, you know, the kids like 10 kids in a group and we gave them a project like plan a dance or plan a spirit week or something like that. And it was really great to see the kids interact with one another. And it kind of took a little bit of that nervousness away of like sitting in front of five high school kids and you know, having to answer questions. So I don't know, that was super helpful for us. So. Okay. Awesome. We have something like that planned. It's kind of like a three-part process, like an interview with some staff an interview with our e-board. And then while they're like in the waiting for interviews, they're coming together in groups to do something like that. So, okay. I like that. That, that, that means I'm doing something. <laughs> it's a process. Oh, um, yes. It's okay. <laughs> Um, something else you can do along those same lines mm -hmm. is to um, give a, a job description and then ask your student leaders, how would they go about fulfilling that and have them bring that presentation in their area of strength. So it may be in the area of technology, you're going to be able to find out who can uh, create, who is creative artistically. Uh, but allow them to present in their, to their strength. And then you're going to get an idea of um, what they're going to bring to the table instead of asking a question if you know, if you were a fruit, what kind of fruit would you be? Um, you, you get a better, you really get a better quality leader because you're really going to understand what they're going to be able to bring to the table. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it, everybody. And Nicole, I would just add on to that really quickly. So I figured that dance uh, dance tryouts have dance clinics and cheer tryouts have cheer clinics. So this year we're running an interview clinic uh, okay. where we're going to teach kids, whether you're an introvert or extrovert, how to, how to participate in a good interview uh, because introverts and extroverts kind of need different skill sets there. So we're trying that out. Nicole, you can come join us this Thursday if you want. Oh, okay. Check out the interview clinic. Yeah. I'll email you. <laughs> okay. Well, awesome. I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Uh, thank you to those people that shared out, uh, Aaron and Shauna and Nairi, uh, as well as Ron and Jeff for always having our backs and getting things done for us behind the scenes. Um, but thank you all for coming. And I, of course, um, if you have any questions or want to get a hold of any of us, I hope that you uh, we will have this chat saved. Um, and so we'll get that information to you and you can always contact me. Remember, these are the people you can lean upon. We're always here for you. And Ron, I don't know if we have a graphic for next month, but we have two, if two events coming up in June, the first one is the Jedi book club. I know you want to talk about that. I and do. I know there's, there's a graphic for that too. Cause I saw, <laughs> I saw the sample email blast earlier. There is absolutely a graphic for that. So we don't yet have a graphic for our next presentation, uh, but I can, at the very least, I can promote our JEDI book club. So JEDI stands for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Uh, and uh, so we're going to be having a three-part book series, book club series this summer, uh, starting on Monday, June 14th at 4 p.m. Uh, the book is So You Want to Talk About Race uh, by Ijeoma Oluo. And uh, from the first portion that I've already listened to on Audible, it's fantastic. Uh, my wife already read it for her PTA, California PTA Board of Directors Book Club as well. Uh, it is. It will really spark some, I think, some thoughtful conversation and uh, and some good some good discussion about ways that we can uh, better serve all of our students uh, at our schools and uh, and have those discussions back at our campuses. So. Um, that is already, I think I, I may have ended that prematurely there. Uh, Cata1.org forward slash Jedi. Once again, Cata1.org forward slash Jedi. You could register today. And, um, and we're even going to have a component where if you didn't get a chance, I know it's a busy time. 
If you didn't even get a chance to read all the book, we're actually going to be kind of doing like a cliff notes version. So you can still participate in the conversation. And we really just, again, we just want to, uh, we want to spark conversations uh, surrounding uh, these very important topics, justice, equity, diversity, inclusion. We'll have a June book club, a July book club, and an August book club. Uh, so please join us for any or all of the three. And then our next webinar is going to be on Monday, June 21st at 7 p.m. The topic for that, Ron, I believe you were in the committee that is uh, designed really that. Equity, equity, what comes okay. next. Equity, what comes next. All right, awesome. Yes. We'll put that on your calendars and we will have uh, some uh, graphics coming soon for that as uh, it's been a busy end of the school year for everybody. So <laughs> for sure. All right, Joe McMahon, thank you so much for putting together tonight's webinar with the committee on the CATAM board and um, Shauna and Aaron and, and Nairi. Nairi, thank you so much for presenting tonight and thank you everybody for being here and being a part of tonight's conversation. We'll see you back for more at our next event.